Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. What follows will be a series of clips detailing the suppressed prophecies from Our Lady of La Salette. My first inclination was to cover these prophecies in their entirety in one video. The result would have been a video over 20 minutes in length. I believe this subject matter is best digested in shorter chunks, so I've decided to make three or four videos on this topic. The apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary at La Salette on September 19, 1846, has long been a source of controversy, particularly regarding the undisclosed elements of Our Lady's message. In 1999, the controversy reached its peak when Abbe Michel Corteville uncovered the original letters from the two visionaries, Melanie and Maximin, sent to Pope Pius IX in 1851. These letters, hidden in the Vatican archives for decades, reignited the debate. Critics of the later versions of The Secrets of La Salette, as published by the Sears, felt validated upon discovering that the original versions were comparatively brief. However, the triumph of the critics was short-lived. Abbe Courteville soon conducted a thorough and scholarly study of the apparition and message of La Salette. His research revealed that the visionaries intentionally disclosed their secrets gradually, with the later versions logically expanding upon the earlier ones. This intricate and captivating controversy, often overshadowed by the third secret of Fatima, which we will cover in a later video, adds a layer of complexity to the entire narrative of La Salette. Let's dive in and see if we can discover why modernist Rome would want to suppress these prophecies. What follows are the controversial and disputed statements given by Our Lady to the children at La Salette. Melanie, what I'm about to tell you will not always be a secret. You may make it public in 1858. The priests, the ministers of my son, the priests by their wicked lives, by their irreverence and their impiety in the celebration of the holy mysteries, by their love of money, their love of honours and pleasures. The priests have become cesspools of impurity. Yes, the priests are asking for vengeance, and vengeance is hanging over their heads. Woe to the priests and those dedicated to God, who by their infidelity and their wicked lives are crucifying my son again. The sins of those consecrated to God cry out towards heaven and call for vengeance and now vengeance is at their door. For there is no one left to beg mercy and forgiveness for the people. There are no generous souls. There is no one left worthy of offering a spotless sacrifice to the Eternal on behalf of the world. God will strike in an unprecedented way. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. God will exhaust his wrath upon them and no one will be able to escape so many afflictions altogether. The chiefs, the leaders of the people of God, have neglected prayer and penance, and the devil has bedimmed their intelligence. They have become wandering stars, which the old devil will drag along with his tail to make them perish. God will allow the old serpent to cause divisions among those who reign, in every society and every family. Physical and moral agonies will be suffered. God will abandon mankind to itself and will send punishments which will follow one after the other for more than 35 years. The society of men is on the eve of the most terrible scourges and the gravest events. Mankind must expect to be ruled with an iron rod and to drink from the chalice of wrath from God. May the Pope guard against the performers of miracles. For the time has come when the most astonishing wonders will take place in the earth and in the air. In the year 1864, Lucifer, together with a large number of demons, will be unloosed from hell. They will put an end to faith little by little, even in those dedicated to God. They will blind them in such a way that unless they are blessed with a special grace, these people will take on the spirit of these angels of hell. Several religious institutes will lose all faith and lose many souls. 